The most successful business people learn storytelling for a reason. It's because there's nothing quite like a great story to attract interest and to engage at the level of the heart where people really connect with you, where you can earn that, I feel like I know you, I like you, I trust you. And a lot of people say that in business, trust is the thing that fast tracks business relationships. Trust is the currency of business. Now, about a week ago, I was in a Zoom meeting with Judy and Roger Keelan, who you see here today. It's routine for me to meet up with an event organizer to help me customize the workshop. And Junie says, you know, it's more than no like and trust. In our meetings, we're talking about charisma because charisma is more than that trust. It's like a magnetism, like a magnet where you attract people who want to be with you. The things you believe, but they just like being with you. Can you talk about, Renee, using stories that increase personal charisma? I said, Judy, you saw me at Vancouver Business Network and did any of those stories work for you? Like I had my, my epic success story. I've got three stories, which, which one do you think? Epic success, colossal fail, and right then Judy goes, fail. I, no, wait a minute, Judy, I, I have a third story. Nope, fail, colossal fail. I'm like, well, my third story is transformation, like how I learned what I learned and put it into a system that I can teach. And she says, Renee, who doesn't like to look, crane their neck at a car crash? We want to see you totally crashed. We want to see limbs dismembered. We want blood spurting from your arteries. We want your skull cracked open, cerebral spinal fluid coming out. We'll be okay because we know you're here to tell about it. And then rise like a phoenix from the ashes to success. I want your colossal fail story. Now, I may have embellished that a little bit. You know, Judy. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Here's something she did say. She said that the morning group would appreciate humor. So Renee, if you can bring some humor to liven us up, we'd enjoy that. She also said this, I think colossal fail would have strong resonance, especially now, with everybody wondering what they should do about their business. How will they continue? Should they be looking for something different? So it's not just necessarily fail, because for us, it isn't anything that we did that, that caused this change. It's just that we're living in these uncertain and changing circumstances. So how do you grab the bull by the horn and not be afraid to leap in a different direction? You know, we want to see it's possible. And this idea that you can use storytelling in building business relationships, and you can use storytelling to grow your personal magnetism and charisma, you know, it lends hope and it, and it feels good. And, and that's what we'd like um, our meeting to be about. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, we have some member overlap. And so Renee, if you could tell different stories instead of the same stories. I think that's pretty funny because Judy thinks that I have tons and tons of colossal fail stories. <laughs> <laughs> so today I'm going to talk about a method, a system that you can use to increase your charisma and what I call tip the scales in your favor. Most of us know that in business, when you get into a business conversation, whether it's a presentation, an ebook, a social media post, whatever it is, it's really a, a two-part proposition. Like on the one hand, you want to be a content expert and recognized for what you know. And on the other hand, it's that no like trust and what today we're calling charisma. So that's what we're talking about today. 
I have a method that I will share with you. And the method is what I teach and use in the storytelling masterclass. It starts with you embracing your duality. And I don't mean like Jekyll and Hyde, Jekyll good, Hyde bad. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna tell really interesting and engaging stories, you take on the role of editor in the planning and um, editing to make your stories great. And then that charismatic role of storyteller. As an editor, the first step is to choose the right story a story that engages your audience. The second step is to edit your story, edit for effect, for the way that it touches emotions. And the third step is to bring your story to life as a storyteller. And so let's give it, oh, you know what? Before I go right into practice, I have a question and Roger, if you could help me. If each of you would take a look at the chat, pull it up and type into it. Right now, you came today for a reason. You've got an upcoming presentation or a conversation or an ebook or a blog. You've got something where you're going to take the skills you learned today and use them to improve storytelling and charisma. Please type into the chat anything that's top of the mind. What presentation's coming up for you where you will use these skills? And Roger, if you could just call out the full variety of answers, that would be fantastic. Well, recruiting, inspiration, to find one good person who can benefit from my business income system. I'm expanding my webinars. I teach and share through storytelling, learning more always is a support. Instagram, blog writing, help people, better engagement. So storytelling, the last time I spoke and opened this, someone said, I will use storytelling every time I speak. Thank you, thank you, Roger. Now what I'll do is let's do a, a little bit of practice. As the editor, I said the first step is to pick the right story. And the right story does some things for you. It makes a point that you care about, what you want the audience to know about you. A lot of speakers come to me and they wanna tell the world a message. The thing is, the world might not really be ready for that message. So the other thing you need to have when you pick a great story is make it personal. It's got to have something in it that the audience came to hear, something they expect. And then what I call charisma potential. Is it something that when you tell it, it feels authentic, it feels important. When you tell it, you can bring your personality to it. And then it's a bonus if you can be entertaining as well. And so let's just put it to the test. I'm gonna go through these out of order. Get ready to chat. Here's my question. Did you notice that I opened the presentation with a story? The story of my conversation with Judy and Roger. And now what I'd like to know is on a scale of zero to 10, like zero, that's the most boring story. It had no personal interest for me to 10. I found that story to be personally relevant to me right now. If you could type into the chat, just put in a number zero to 10. Did that story resonate and feel like the appropriate story for you? Roger, how did I do? Eight, ten, seven, six, nine, six, seven, eight, five, five. All right, that's pretty good. The next thing is the story does it have charisma potential? Is it something that you can bring? And I'd like to chat a little bit about what really is charisma. And again, type into the chat what do you think are the attributes? 
that make you feel attracted, like you'd like to stand next to someone, get to know them, meet them? What are the clues or cues, the things that attract you to someone else? Go ahead and type into the chat and Roger, if you'll call out some attributes. Their energy, the happiness, authentic, personable, compassionate, smiles, I feel that they are speaking directly to me, the, their expertise, energy, confidence, welcoming, approachable, approachable, spark, tone, body posture, energy, eye to eye contact. Beautiful. And so, and so Judy nailed it when she said it's more than earning trust. It's something else in the way that you show up. I think of present, I think of charisma as three things. And one is presence, the kinds of things that people called out, that eye contact, that body language, the sense that you're joyful to be present and aware with someone else, that you really do show up. Power, and I don't mean power like you've got big authority. I mean power like your own unique, personality and warmth, a, a caring, a sincerity about the way that, that you do it. And, and so be gentle, but I would like to know a scale of zero, Renee had no charisma in her opening story, to a scale of 10, she had great charisma in her opening story. Type in some numbers and Roger, you can call them out. Nine, eight. 9.5, 10, 9. Lovely. 9, 8, 10, 9, 8. God, I'm 10. feeling so successful. You wow. should be feeling very charismatic <laughs> right about now. Now, if you think that that's the magic, that that's what you want to capture, the know and like and trust and charisma, then I've made an effort to demonstrate that story can do that that people feel like they know you when you bring your personality to a story. Now, then I said bonus points if you can be entertaining. And I'll tell you what I mean by entertaining. It's like when you go to a movie and next thing you know, you're lost. Time, time passes like that. Two hours went by and you, you were so engaged, you just lost yourself in a really great story, your listeners will have emotional ups and downs and they'll laugh and smile and you know they'll, they'll be right there with you. Did you, in my story, my opening story of talking with Judy, did on that kind of being lost and engaged, again, zero, not at all, I was thinking about my email and something else, or 10, I was right there with you, how did I do on my entertainment score? And Roger, if you could just read those out as they come into the chat. 10, 9, 7, 10, 8, 9.5. Beautiful. I'm feeling really good. Now, as an editor, you tell a story to make a point. I put this story right at the opening to make two points. One. When I work with professional people, they tell me, I don't have time for storytelling. I have to get to the business of business. This telling a story, this is something I don't really, it's, you know, how am I gonna fit that in? I've given you an example of a one and a half minute opening story, my conversation with Judy, and then I went into a more technical presentation, attributes about story. And even people with very technical business presentations can do that. Open with a story, something interesting and engaging, and then move into your technical points. So that's one message that what I wanted, what I wanted to convey. I have another one. The second one is, your audience, your listener learns about you and you can know that when you plan your story. I chose a story that when it happened a week ago, where it happened, an online Zoom meeting. 
Who were the characters? The characters were the event organizer of the kids meetup. You, by hearing the story, vicariously learn that I put on workshops, I meet online with organizers, I customize and tailor my workshops to the needs of the group. Like I could just say it outright, but if I tuck it inside the story, you vicariously take in information about what I do. And more importantly, you get a sense of what it's like when you work with me. And that's, that's that turning point. That's that, not just the, the charisma of it, but the, I know you, I like you, I trust you. I know what you do. I know what a business relationship would be like if I worked with you. That's why stories are so incredibly powerful. Now, I said editor point number two. How do you, if your intuition knows the right story, it's, it meets those criteria, then how do you edit your story for effect so it does what it's supposed to do? So here's step number one. If you think of the world like Google Earth, big world, and then you start zooming in, 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 until you get to your house, and then you get to your, in this case, my office, and then it's me sitting at my computer, okay? Zoom in to a scene that you can describe where it happened, when it happened, who were the characters, okay? Zoom in. The best scene to put into your story has something called a turning point. So if you had a camera, you'd focus in on this turning point, and I'll tell you what that is. A turning point is you want something, you have an emotion tied to it, and it, out of that comes a decision and an action. So we zoomed into me at my desk. I desperately want to provide a quality workshop. And Judy wants it to be on message and helpful for people at this time in their lives. And together we come to a decision and that leads to an action of me putting together a customized uh, message for today and then really trying to bring uh, what we wanted. So the best stories focus in on a desire that leads to decision and action. And that's what people judge you by. Decisions you make, actions you take. You, you've heard them say, don't listen to what they say, watch what they do. Your audience is paying attention to decisions and actions. And so when your story features a turning point, it tends to be more effective. The next step is editing for effect. In the Business Storytelling Masterclass, I teach 20 editing strategies, how you take your story from its raw form to a more effective form that touches emotions and engages people. Things like actual words, things like red blood spurting out of arteries. You can see it, you can, it's kind of creepy, but it gets your attention, it's got color. Things like tell your story in the present tense, like it's happening right now. There are 20 things that you can do to take your idea of a good story and turn it into an edited for effect story. And bonus points for being entertaining. Then, now you've got your story, uh, you've done the editing, so it's gonna be a quality story. How do you bring that charisma, how do you bring it so it communicates and really connects with your listener? I can't get over how many people hire me for a keynote presentation or something they're going to do. This, this happens pretty frequently. I have this high stakes presentation. I'm gonna be speaking at a conference. Renee, we're bringing you in because we want, we want you to teach people how to walk up and be confident on stage and use the right face and use the right hands. And I, I, I back up and say, wait a minute. First off, you have to say the right things. 
And that's where the craft comes in. That should be on the front end of planning any presentation. Then the way you bring it to life actually doesn't take as much coaching as you'd think. Basically, you relive the experience as you tell it. So you're not telling someone about it. When I talk about my conversation with Judy, I'm sitting right there reacting to the fact that she wants a colossal fail and thinks I have more of these colossal fail stories around. When you live in the moment, in, in the telling of your experience, that's when your face does the right thing and your hands do the right thing. You show up as you. So step number two, some people say, well, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have big gestures. I'm not, I'm not that kind of person. You, you are that kind of person. You are you. The thing is to embrace being your best self and bringing that energy to the conversation. And then what I'm calling engage your, your charisma. Um, I thought I had my next picture. That, the image of the, of the hero, he was from the movie Shazam. You can turn on your charisma and bring it when you've edited your story, you've practiced your story, and now you have opportunity to talk to someone and just tell it the way you talk to a friend. Okay, so now you've gone through the process. We've gone through the steps and we did it backwards. I told the story, then we talked about it. This time, let's do it the other way. This time, I'll tell a story and you evaluate while um, if it's the right story, um, the zooming in, think about those things now as a different kind of listener and, and see what you think. So a few years ago, the Blue Hotel, downtown Vancouver, it's the dress rehearsal for TEDx Stanley Park. And I've coached four of the speakers. And Patty Morrison is an image consultant. She's there to help the speakers at the dress rehearsal to make certain that they're gonna look their very best on stage. And I reached out to Patty ahead of time. I, you know, I, I don't wanna take a lot of time, but hey, would you mind if I brought some clothes and at the lunch break, could you just take a look and give me advice? And I was thinking this would be very simple and she was kind and said yes. And so there we are in this big empty conference room at the Blue Hotel. And I've got my clothes honestly in a, in a black plastic trash bag. And I brought some black slacks and a blue sweater and a burgundy sweater. And Patty looks at them and she says, um, Renee, I've seen your speakers. I've watched them improve. I know the magic that you bring to what you do, but your clothes are boring. Well made, but boring. And not only that, you are underdressed for this event today, the dress rehearsal. I, you know, I, she, she said, you've got more speakers here than other speaker coaches and you are the most underdressed person. I said, look, I'm a retired eye doctor. We're a pretty conservative bunch of folks. It's not really about how I look. It's about what I bring to make the difference, to help the speaker bring their big personality and be them. It's not really about me. And she said, you don't get it. You're in a creative profession. Public speaking is, a, especially for TEDx and for Get Inspired Talks, those are performance arts. And you need to look classy, but edgy and interesting. And, and again, you know, I'm not really buying it. She says, here's the thing that you're not understanding. You look like either one, you're not successful. You can't afford to dress for the job you have. You're not an eye doctor now, you're a speaker coach. And we know you can afford to look better. But here's the zinger. She said, if it's not that, it's number two. 
you look like you don't care enough about the people you work with to put in the effort. That was a sucker punch. I care a lot about what I bring to the table and I care a lot about the people who I coach. If by not dressing more, more edgy, I'm communicating to them that I don't care, that's, that's, a, that's a sucker punch. And it's confusing too, because it's kind of like I, I explained, you know, I just walk up at the end on the stage when the coaches and the speakers walk up at the end of TEDx Stanley Park, 2,600 people, it's a standing ovation, but my little bit is just to walk on stage at the end. You don't wear white to a wedding. You don't upstage the bride. It's not really my day. I don't want to blend in, but I don't want to upstage. And, and she said, we, we have a way we can work on that to get you where you need to be. And, and Patty had a method. Okay, so I'm not here today to give you style advice. I picked that story because I wanted to make a point that a lot of people tell me they're not charismatic, they're not storytellers. They don't wanna put a story at the beginning of a technical presentation and then come back to it later so that from start to finish their talk holds interest, excuse me. They don't wanna do that. Like they understand that just like you can update your wardrobe, but they haven't yet embraced the idea that they're quite capable of learning storytelling skills. And more than that, I think in a business setting, you have a responsibility to show up and make an effort to be charismatic, be interesting. Your clients, the people you do business with, they are absolutely worth it. Okay, that's an example story. Now let's just think it through like an evaluator. Did you notice the zooming in? Okay, so when you think of the right story, if you zoom in and set the scene, okay, so it's, where is it? It's the blue hotel, what is it? You can imagine a conference room, it's the dress rehearsal we've got. So you zoom in and then the important conversation to have is the turning point that is emotional where there's a decision to be made. The turning point, you would think it's simple. I showed up thinking, Phoop, she'll just tell me blue sweater, black slacks, you're good to go. And instead, she gave me a lesson that changed my life. And an evaluation, did you feel like I relive the experience? Did I show up as myself? Did I bring what Shazam, charisma? Um, just evaluate my story. Zero, not a great story, didn't do anything for me. 10, charismatic, felt like the right story, makes a good point. And go ahead and type that into the chat. And Roger, nine, let me know how we did. Nine, nine, nine 10, nine. <clears throat> Yay. Well, Yay. You got, uh, nine, eight, ten, nine. Good. People, uh, I think those I heard messages... they can dress up, but they need, they need to story up. Ten, ten, nine. They need to story nine. up. Fantastic. Fantastic. Let me get back to my PowerPoint next slide. There we go. So um, I wanted to make it personal, wanted to bring my charisma, wanted to be entertaining. I called Patty this morning because I thought of that story in the middle of the night last night. And I have this rule that when I, the same thing, you know, that I tell people when I coach them, if you're going to talk about people and share stories, make sure you've got their okay up front. And I have some takeaway points. So we talked about how you choose the right story and then you edit the story and then you tell the story. And we talked about how to go about that. I told this second story because I have some takeaway points in addition that I'd like to share. And the first is 
Storytelling is a skill that you can learn. The second is most people feel like they need stories that are the epic fail and the business success and the client success. Those are classic business stories. I told some classic business stories at the VBN meetup. If you're interested in having that video, just type into the chat your name and your email and that you want that video and I'd be happy to send that to you. I picked different stories today because my opinion is business people don't realize their daily life is full of the best stories to tell. So many people say, I don't really have anything interesting to talk about. Once you notice, it's about turning points and interactions with people and that you can tell it in a way to make it fascinating, you discover you have all kinds of stories, a wealth of fascinating things to talk about in daily life. Number three, I, talk, I wanted to make the point that you can edit for greater effect. I showed how you zoom in, pick something that's emotional, that has decisions and actions. And I talked about tell in the present tense, use actual words. There are 20 different techniques you can use to improve your story, to make it more engaging. And you are quite capable of tipping the scales. Or in the, oh, I know you, I like you, I trust you and that charismatic magnetism that makes people really enjoy being with you. Again, earning trust and making a real difference in your business. Now, the other thing that Patty did, because I was at that place where, okay, now I've decided to be edgy. <laughs> in the, when I was in the Air Force, I had a uniform. That was a pretty brainless way to get dressed every day, and it really worked for me. <laughs> And then when I was a doctor, it was, you know, black slacks and a sweater and you just put on a lab coat. People don't expect the doctor to look edgy, but this is kind of hard and I don't know how to do it. And Patty had a method and that is, well, we'll go looking through stores together. I'll be with you. I'm going to teach you the basics just so I'll guide you. We'll do a little practice until you understand the basics. And then once you have the basics, you'll get independent and you'll acquire and become more and more unique and appropriate for you. That, that was the plan, that, okay? My business storytelling masterclass is exactly the same in that regard. I have a five-step storytelling system where you're guided through practice you get help, you get all the basics, and over the course of the class, 47 days, and creating 15, crafting and, and telling 15 engaging stories over 47 days, you get enough practice to where you become independent and more and more creative and more and more uniquely you. And this is what the storytelling system looks like. First, to notice the great stories. I, I gave you two stories that most people wouldn't just go to automatically. When you start to notice what are the right stories, then get your first draft into writing. And the way we do that is you, you take your phone, first you think it through. I'm gonna zoom in, here's the decision point, here's the emotions, you think it through. And then you take your phone and make a selfie video. When people do that, they naturally do the right facial expressions and it comes out sounding like you really talk. When people sit and type a story, it usually isn't as engaging, it's not as good because we don't type, talk and write papers the same. So we get the story the way you really talk. Then use a talk to text program to have actual words. Then we apply those strategies. Look through your script. Is there a place where you can use real words? 
look through your script. Is there a place where you can bring colorful language? We have 20 things you can do as you go through your script to make it more effective. And when you have a script you like, you pull out your phone and do a new selfie using your script. Take a look at your delivery, your emotions, your charisma. And when you like it, then tell it to a test audience. In the storytelling masterclass, you're paired with business peers. So you hear their stories and what they're practicing and you learn about business stories, which is really cool. But then you also get practice telling your stories. And if they love your stories, if your stories are effective and they communicate the message you want to communicate, then they're ready for all those things you listed when, when we came on board earlier your ebook, your social media posts, your trainings with staff, your one-on-one -on -one meetings with clients and trying to attract business partners, investors, things like that. I can walk through what you get in the course. Uh, it starts on June 8th at 7 p.m. We have six one-hour live online group classes, a value of 1,900. There are video recordings. If you're not there, you have the video. If you're there and you want to review, you have the video, a value of 1,900. If you're working on the ebook and you're working with partners and there's something in that training that you want to show to other people, you have it on video. Course worksheets. These make it so you don't have to be real careful with note taking. Additional resources and additional study things are there if you want to dig deeper and you have activities so that you get practice with those editing strategies I told you about, value 1,200, weekly homework to keep you right on track to, to achieve your 15 stories in the 47 days, $500. Once a week, you get together with business peers. Tell your stories and get feedback. Listen to other business stories and get feedback. That practice value $2,000, private Facebook group value 1,000, one-on-one 15 minute meetings with me, four of them. So you've, you've been in the classes, you're doing the homework, you're working with your peers, but you get one-on-one -on -one help for anything that comes up. And if you're trying to customize, tailor, pick the right story, make it work for a specific kind of presentation, that's the value of $600 and it's a great thing to do. The, we closed the training with a three hour live online business storytelling summit. So you've worked your stories with your peer groups. Now is the time when the best stories get told to the bigger audience. You get practice telling your stories to more people. You hear more business stories and you're going to witness all those editing strategies you've learned. You're watching with new eyes and you're watching innovative ways that other people put them into practice. That has a value of $3,000. So the entire course has a value of over $12,000, 100% money back guarantee. And if you take the course and you want to take it again, you get to take it out of savings. If you, Take, if you sign up for the class that we have beginning on June 8th, instead of the 12,000, it's $999 US. If you come into the course and we'll do one thing, make a commitment that at the end of the course, you will give a video testimonial. Tell the truth about your experience and how it's changed you or struggles, anything. A video testimonial decreases to 735 US and because of the pandemic and the way things are in the world right now, you can pay in Canadian. That's about a 30% savings. You can pay in one fee or in installments. Renee? And I'm uh, open to taking questions. Uh, Lynn Temperley is asking, how did you originally overcome the dreaded on stage nerves. And you are amazing. You ooze charisma and believability. Thank you, hugs from Lynn Temperley. Well, that's beautiful. 
I'm going to ask Roger to put the landing page for the course onto the chat so anyone can have access to it. I'll tell you, my, I'll answer that question because it's a great question. I, I have found working with clients that when you embrace your big personality and you're telling stories that are your stories and you get practice, it starts to become more and more comfortable. And that oftentimes people have some fear because they're not confident that they've got great things to say. When you've used your editing strategies and you watch people light up in day-to-day -day conversations, you know your stories are good. And then the confidence comes from that. You, you, you know you're bringing the right stuff. And that desire, you know you're putting it out there for someone else for a reason. It's, it's not just selfish. It's important that you project and share. It elevates and takes away the fear and the nerves. Thank you for asking. Other comments or questions, please type into chat and Judy will help me.